Hello, this is David from Excel Consulting and in this video I'm going to show you how to go from something like this to something like this. Um, the issue here is that this person Jack has actually four rows of data that refer to him but this is kind of pointless because in Q1 he's just answered the one question one time. It's just the data comes out in a weird strange way out of a system probably. Um, same with Dan, he's answered these questions like that, Michelle like this. So it's really not a very good way to record data. What we want is something where Jack has one row, Dan has one row, David has one row, etc, etc. So how are we going to get from this to this? Um, there's a feature called Power Query in the newer version of Excel and it is amazing. Only available in 2016 or 2019. However, you can have it as an optional download for free for 2010 and 13. It's also available in Power BI. So Power Query is available in both. First you select your data, then you go to data, and we're going to get data from table or range, that one. It automatically puts it like this, I press OK, and then it opens up this new screen which isn't even Excel anymore. This is the Power Query Editor. Boom, 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 Power Query Editor. So, the Power Query Editor is really fantastic. If you're not using it in Excel already, then you are probably wasting time. It's also the way that data comes into Power BI. So, there are a few things that we can do with this, and I'm just going to show you the one that we need for what I've described. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Person column, and we're going to choose transform and then group by. So I want to group the, the person column by a few different things. So I'm going to click on advanced and click, first I'm going to do Q1 total and then I'm going to do sum of Q1. I know they're all ones and zeros but if you sum it it still works. It would also work because of the this data if you did other aggregations like average min max because it's just a one or a zero but I'm just going to be consistent and choose one of them give it a different name q2 total q3 total is going to be a sum of q3 that should be q2 and then I'm going to press OK and there you go. So I've gone into seven rows <laughs> where each row has a unique value in the person column. Um, what you will have noticed though is I got rid of some of my columns. So I had the date column and the entry ID column and I got rid of them. Now let's, um, let's try and fix that. So the entry ID is interesting because it is actually a unique value. So I can't actually group this essentially I need to either give it an aggregation when it returns something kind of like I did sum here but I mean it's silly isn't it just summing one two three and four because it's Jack summing five six seven eight nine because it's Dan even other aggregations like average they just don't make sense so this cannot transfer to the next one the date one though can because Jack always has the same date Dan always has the same date etc so um, I'm going to click on group rows and click on this cog to edit it. I'm going to add a grouping, which is by date. Then I press OK. And there you go. Now it's grouped it by date as well. And this worked only because the grouping was at the same level for person and date together. If, however, the date column didn't match, so if the first two rows of Jack were 21st of of October and the next two rows of Jack were 16th of November and maybe the next five rows which span Dan and David were all on the 5th of December this would not work so it only works because they are in the same level the entry ID column though there's no real way to save that we can't save every data point in there unless we uh, we do an aggregation or we use some of the unpivoting commands which are more 
complex in Power Query. So once you've got it like that, then you can do other kind of transformations. So for example, I don't want the time as well as the date, so I'm going to just choose date like that. Much, much simpler. And I'm going to go to the home and close and load, close and load two. And I'm going to get it to show me in a table. And let's go to existing worksheet. I'm just going to click on here. So that it just shows it to me something that's similar. Yeah, so the the there's a different ordering, but it's the same. One zero one 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 zero. So you see it's worked. So yeah, if you have a different version of Excel or Power Query, you might not get the same close and load two options, but you can do something very, very similar. Great, thanks for watching.